So hello everyone. Before I get into today's video, I did have to split this massive merch haul from the past couple of months into two videos because there wouldn't be enough memory for me to export it. So yeah, so you're getting a two-parter, which will hopefully be uploaded back to back. And also, I do apologize if some stuff is quite sped up throughout this video. I tried to fit it in to the kind of duration of my sort of on-camera clips, you know, which is a little bit tricky to do. I didn't really plan this out too well, I have to say. So also, I did kind of want to talk about this quickly, but if you are interested in picking up some of the merch from specifically independent artists in this video, uh, you'll probably have to wait until their shop opens again. Unfortunately, some of these people that I've collected from, their shops aren't open at the moment. And, you know, I'd just also be wary that maybe some of the merch that I picked up in this video might not be in stock when they open up their shop again, so that's just something to keep in mind. But if you are interested, of course, in picking up items from, like, any of the artists that I mentioned, definitely go follow them on their social medias to keep up to date. And yeah, definitely go, of course, support your independent artists out there. So also, one more update before I start. I will be taking my next video after this one kind of slow, just because I want to focus on getting the prizes done for the winner for, of course, my Ninja Ring giveaway. Yeah, but I do hope to have it out at the very end of July, just because also there are various figure festivals that are going to be out around that time, and I kind of want to, of course, sit down and record that video. And yeah. So I'd also really like to thank everyone who participated in this giveaway. At the time of recording this audio, I don't know who the winner is. I haven't um, pulled for a winner yet. But yeah, I really appreciate um, the vast amount of people who are interested and decided to enter this giveaway. So yes, I really appreciate it. Um, it was a lot more than I was expecting. And yeah, so also maybe a little bit of a heads up, but I do talk about some characters who I really quite enjoy and, you know, I simp for a little bit. Uh, so I get like a little bit enthusiastic in certain parts and, you know, I guess just a heads up for some people, but you know, it's very nice to talk about characters you really enjoy at the end of the day. So yes, hope you'll look forward to me just kind of gushing about some of my favorite characters in recent times. And now without further ado, let us get into the first part of this massive and possibly a mess of a merch haul video. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Sakura Unboxing. So, welcome to my merch haul today. So, I have a whole bunch of different types of merch to show, whether it be from independent artists or any official merch, video games, zines or zines, and so on and so forth. So, you know, I haven't really done any like merch video in a long time just because I feel like the figures kind of take priority a little bit when it comes to making videos. But I thought I'd do this like maybe every once in a while, every couple of months where I collect a bunch of merch and I show them off in one dedicated video just to have like a whole bunch of stuff compiled. So yes, I have quite the variety, quite a lot. I'm looking at the stack of stuff I have on my other desk. So yes, I will you know be showing all those off to the best of my ability. So without further ado, let us get started. So, also, as I go through this video, I am going to be, you know, categorizing these a little bit. So, by video games, zines or zines, independent artists. I just kind of want to keep those all categorized and orderly, so that's sort of the format for this video. So, without further ado, we're going to get started with the video game pickups. So, the first one I have right here is a very anticipated game for a lot of people, and that is, of course, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So, you know, I played a bit of Breath of the Wild, like, way back when, but I actually never finished beating the final boss because I was too busy exploring this beautiful game. And I actually picked this up for my sister because she, she loves Breath of the Wild, and she was obviously very much anticipating this game. I feel like... I don't know, something about like Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild she just really loves. Um, she doesn't really play any of the other Zelda games. Uh, she said she'd like to. Um, she's played Wind Waker and, you know, a little bit of Skyward Sword. But yeah, this game, I feel like it just hits a little bit different for her. So, you know, I was happy to order this off of, you know, GameStop's, um, you know, store online. And thankfully they had some copies and they shipped it to me. 
Uh, the thing about this game, though, is that it was like an extra $10 compared to normal Switch games, which I was, you know, a little shocked about. I mean, it, it could have been worse, but yeah, I mean, pretty big game overall, but yeah, so I don't know when I'll have the time to play this game, but, you know, I definitely like to just for, you know, the overall adventure in this game. So the next video game I have is the Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection. So I do really love Mega Man. I love the character designs and, you know, the spin-offs. Um, so there's that. And, you know, if you had asked me which is my favorite Mega Man spin-off, I'd have to say it's Battle Network. I do like the net navi designs and the stories and the gameplay so yes i really enjoyed the series and i was obviously very excited when they compiled all six games you know with some extra content into one cartridge and you know you could buy this digitally but i do like my physical editions so you know i was very excited to pick this up and i actually got this copy for free or i should say you know i didn't have to buy this with my own money and i'll quickly go into that little story so I'll put the game down, first of all. <laughs> so, basically, there was this whole, like, art collaboration on Twitter that I participated in, and it was like a countdown towards the release date of the Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection, and, you know, I just like to participate in it. And this was hosted by Rock Miyabi, and they did an overall fantastic job with, like, organizing this event. So basically, you pick a character, you have a prompt, and then you just draw the character with that prompt, and unfortunately, it was first come first serve on the character. It was relegated to one character per person. So unfortunately, my favorites, I couldn't quite get in time. So I was scrolling through the net navvies in the series and which one I want to draw. And I ended up settling on plantman.exe who has like one of my favorite designs in the series. So yes, my art will be shown up on screen. And yeah, he's just got a very cool design. I am happy with how the piece turned out for the most part. I did take like elements from his battle and like what his abilities are. I guess the one thing maybe I didn't quite like was the background. Um, I don't know, something about like the color I use, like with the, the red, I believe it is. I wasn't really a big fan of it, I don't know, it just like looked off. But you know, I was excited to do a piece for this collab anyway. And basically, you know, to those who participate, your name gets put into a raffle, and, you know, I thought it was going to be one winner, but it turns out it was like a good 10 to 15 people who were chosen, and my name was in it, and I was like, oh my god, I won a raffle of some sort, like, Lady Luck was on my side for once, and basically the winners got, you know, money to go towards either you know, the Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection, or, you know, you can just use it for other things, and you know, they were nice enough to say, oh, I can buy the game for you and ship it. Like, just sending you the money via PayPal is the easiest, or, you know, I can buy digital codes. The one thing about getting this game digitally, though, is that it is, like, part one and two. So it's like, some of the games are in one part, and some of the games are in another part. And, of course, I do like my physical copies, so I'm just like, oh, just, you know, send the money and I can just buy it online myself. And I ended up doing that, so... Yeah, I won a raffle, I got this game for free, you know, I, you know, I could have used, like, the money to go towards, like, you know, figures and such, but I just kind of wanted to commemorate, you know, this series by actually buying it, so yeah. I don't know when I'll be playing this, but, you know, I'd like to in the future, because I think it's a great game overall, so yeah. Very happy to have gotten a pretty much free copy of this game. So yeah, now I'm gonna show off some stuff I got from Mandarake, which, you know, I don't really get from often because, you know, budgeting for figures, but I saw these gorgeous Land of the Lustrous fan books and I had to pick them up. So the first one we have right here is actually a doujin, so I accidentally picked this up because I didn't know it was a doujin, but this is a sort of Karen Gorm Lapis sort of focused doujin in a way. I actually haven't, I've skimmed through the pages, but again, it's in Japanese and I don't know what they're saying, but yeah. And I guess it's also a sort of, also like, Karen Gorm and Lapfoss sort of also doujin. But yeah, I have no idea what they're talking about. You know, I might, you know, look at Google Translate and see what they're talking about. But I really do love the art style in this one. So, you know, for about, I believe, 600 yen, you know, not that bad of a pickup. 
And after that, we have this small one, which is actually by the same illustrator as that Karen Gorm Dojin. So yeah, this one is all in color. It's very thin as well. I thought it was going to be, unfortunately, a little bit thicker. Uh, I believe on Mandarake, they tell you the page size. They may or may not, which, you know, is a little bit unfortunate if they don't. But yeah, art style, absolutely gorgeous. And I believe this is also 600 yen, so very inexpensive overall. And the last one we have right here is this much more chonky sort of book. So this is a Land of the Lustrous fan illustration book called The Memories with Them. So yeah, again, a whole bunch of different artworks of the characters. Art style is very gorgeous. And, you know, it kind of goes through like different parts of the series, which I really like. So yeah, also very gorgeous cover with all the different gems on there. You know, even with some like flowers and butterflies. It's a very gorgeous, gorgeous art book overall. This one was though the most expensive of the bunch. It was, I want to say it was 4,000 yen. And yeah, but you know, I just saw the artwork and I'm like, just, I went through with it. I shelled out the money for it. But yeah, overall, I, you know, I really love all of these Land of the Lustrous fan books I got. And they're definitely a nice addition to my Land of the Lustrous collection. So after that, um, I actually want to quickly talk about something my sister got me from London. Um, she recently went there, like, for her own, like, you know, graduation trip. And, you know, there wasn't anything in particular that I wanted from there that I could think of. So I'm like, you know, whatever you give me is fine. You know, it's from London. You know, it's a thought that counts. So, you know, she does go to a whole bunch of museums because that's what she really does enjoy doing. So I'll show off the stuff that she got me right here. So yeah, first things first, we have this lovely little postcard of a whole bunch of flamingos. I, I don't know, something about this bird, man. I really like the way they look and damn, those, they got legs for days, very long legs for days. So yeah, this is basically just like, you know, a photograph and they just, you know, put it on this postcard. But, you know, I do really like this overall. I do like, you know, you got adult flamingos, you got baby flamingos. It's, it's very nice. So yeah. You know, just another cute little postcard for sort of my, you know, separate sort of like museum postcard collection. And of course, to go with said flamingo postcard, she actually got me this like flamingo keychain, which, you know, does look very nice. It's pretty big overall, so you do have like, you know, flamingo. The museum she went to is the Natural History Museum, and, and then there's like this leaf. I don't know if it's like a monstera, monstera leaf. I'm not too familiar with the plant. Um, but yeah, it's a quite a large hefty keychain. I'm like tempted to put this on my keys, but I'm scared it's gonna get like dinged up. But yeah, very nice overall, I'd have to say. You know, I really do like this keychain actually. So now we're going to be moving on to merch from independent artists. So I have a whole variety of work in different art styles to show off, which I'm quite excited for. So the first person I'll be talking about is Yami 11 Arts. So, you know, I really do love their art style. It's very like cute and colorful. And, you know, I did pick up like some other merch from them like quite a ways back, but the particular reason why I picked up merch from their shop now was because they made some merch for probably one of my new favorite series of all time. So, I'll show those off right now. So, I'll start off with the first one right here, which is of the character Keyfrey from which had to tell you, which is a gorgeous manga series, great characters, great story, and you know, great world overall. So, you know, I saw that they had made some merch of the characters. So, you know, I picked up Keyfrey because he's definitely one of my favorites. And I apologize if I do butcher his name a little bit. I'm not 100% sure on the pronunciation of it. But yes, I picked his up and I think it's very adorable overall. And it is quite close to. A little bit towards the art style with the kind of like hatching and shading that they used so yes very adorable keyfrey acrylic charm but it's not the main reason why i picked up merch from the store and that has to do with another character who is probably my husbando for the series so yes right here this character right here was the reason why i picked up merch from their shop and that is of course uh, probably my favorite character in which had atelier and that would be Belle de Ruit. And I'm going to explain why I really do love this character so much. So first off, 
big thing out of the way, long-haired anime boy, or manga boy in this case, and oh my god, his hair is absolutely fantastic. It's a, it's a chef's kiss from me, and oh my god, again, gorgeous character design. I'm like, you know, in love. And he is like, you know, middle-aged to like older, and in terms of like fiction and manga and anime, I do kind of lean towards that a little bit in a way. Obviously, it depends on like, you know, how the character looks. I mean, looks aren't everything, but I mean, in this case, it it kind of applies a little bit. Oh my god. And then, um, the last thing is definitely his personality. He can be like calm and collected and serious when he needs to be, but then he can just be like very eccentric for someone his age and then he just has like these bursts of energy and just like his enthusiasm towards things is I freaking love it so much oh my god um so yes favorite character people can fight me on it but you know you won't change my mind I love him so much and when I saw that she made merch of him I'm like I will buy your whole stock, um, but you know, I'm not gonna because budgeting and such, but yeah, I had to pick up merch of him, oh my god, like, I was like, yes, I was so happy when I finally got this, and very gorgeous overall, again, you know, quite close to the art style in terms of like the, you know, the shading and the hatching and such, oh my god, I really hope that with the anime coming out in the distant, distant future that they, you know, people do make more Witch Hat Atelier fan merch because there really isn't a lot out there to be honest. And if there is, it's mostly of Keyfrey, there's Alrugio, and the girls, and that's about it. There's none of him, and I need more of that. I will, you know, just take my money. This is how, like, you make me buy from your store, you draw up and make merch at my husbandos. So yes, obviously, very happy to have this as, like, you know, an addition to my acrylic charm collection and, you know, especially my witch hat atelier collection. After that, I do have only like one piece of merch from this artist, but this is from the artist Milkiness, who I have bought some merch from before. Very gorgeous art style and different merch designs, so I only picked up really one from there because again, I'm just, you know, kind of budgeting a little bit, so I'll show that off quickly right now. So yes, I still have this in its bag because I don't really have anywhere to display this. But this is an Aki Angel acrylic charm from, of course, Chainsaw Man. I do like the dynamic between these two. And I do kind of have a small little bit of, like, Aki Angel uh, acrylic charms that I do kind of want to put this up there with. But yeah, I just got this just for, you know, one little item for the sake of just budgeting. I did really want to pick up their Gojo and Ghetto enamel pins as, like, a set. But I think it was like $25 and I was just feeling like, no, god, I, I don't feel like I want to shell at $25 and like, you know, more along with this acrylic charm. So I kind of held myself back. Next drop they'll probably do, I might pick those up. But yeah, I am perfectly happy with this very adorable Aki Angel acrylic charm. So yes, I'm sorry for me having to hold it like this, but this is a kind of faulty little enamel pin sort of display thing that I made a while back. So yes, the next person I want to talk about is actually, you know, from a Patreon, and that is of course Kramichi, I believe is the name of the creator, but they do um, enamel pins and like monthly pin clubs, so I've subscribed to them and, you know, I do get like a pin, you know, roughly each month or so, you know, they still have to make the pins, and yes, yeah, so I'll be specifically talking about like November all the way up to like February or the enamel pins that I've received. CS. So yes. But yeah, very gorgeous and cute character designs overall, and I really do like, you know, the overall sort of like simplicity to these pins, like they're not like overly detailed, but they're very adorable and gorgeous nonetheless. So yeah, I really do love their designs, and you know, I'm very happy to just, you know, get these like enamel pins for like a sort of nice, cute character collection overall. And also, additionally, I forgot to mention, you know, besides enamel pins that they throw in, they also do throw in, like, some extra little stickers, sticker sheets, and sometimes, like, a little art card. Um, you know, I'll show those off hopefully quickly as, like, I'm talking. But yeah, I do really like their art style overall and the cute characters they make, so yeah, I'm very excited to collect more enamel pins from them in the future. 
so now we're moving on to this little box right here and this is the winter solstice 2022 pin advent calendar so this was a sort of big collaboration between a couple of different artists and they decided to make enamel pins and um, you know put them in this box and it's basically like an advent calendar you open up one each day so there are seven enamel pins total each with a very gorgeous design pin so yes I'll quickly you know you know show their Twitter and explain who the artists were in this so we have Ash the Lazy, Milkiness, Pembrika, and Poxe. I hope I'm pronouncing those all right but yeah Artists that I have bought from in the past, you know, they do collaborate with each other to make merch like this. And so those four were the main moderators and they had also three guest artists who, you know, also made designs, which were Cali Flare, Popaloo, and TV Chani. So yeah, very gorgeous pins overall. And you know, this box is very nice. I actually use this now to store any like backings that I get for enamel pins but yes it's a very nice design box overall and you know very you know it may be cardboard but it's pretty sturdy overall it does have the um the artists names right there unfortunately I think there was like a printing error or something and someone's name got left out unfortunately um but yeah so very nice box overall so I'll also show off the merch that I've gotten from it. So now going into also what this box includes so you do kind of get like one random um, art card by like one of the artists so yeah it's random you don't get really to pick. Uh, they did end up having leftover sales and I actually picked up these other two. Unfortunately there are like five total um, and I couldn't get the other two because they either sold out or they just didn't have any in stock at all which was unfortunate um but yeah i do like the selection i have these are very nice overall uh the other thing that i'll probably just show in some b-roll because they don't have it on hand is that they also included a little sticker which is very cute and if you did buy this like if you did get like this as like an early bird special like the first like 50 people who ordered this it came with like with a you know a small little free sticker of their kind of like I guess logo for this whole collaboration. So yeah, and now I will quickly get into the enamel pins themselves. So yes, right here these are actually you know in the background of my videos, but you guys can barely see them because of like the lighting and such. Um, but yeah, here they are. I actually kind of you know painted this felt to kind of just resemble like the you know stars and nighttime. So yeah, all these pins are absolutely gorgeous and, you know, very detailed overall. Oh my god, these are definitely wonderful. I guess some of my favorites are uh, definitely like the little prince one right here. The one with like the guy with the scarf and snowflake. Um, and then the girl with the penguins like running across her. I think that's very cute overall, but yeah. They're very talented artists. I'm very interested to see what other sort of collabs they do in the future. And if they do a Winter Solstice 2023, I will most likely pick that up because, you know, I really do love their enamel pins and merch designs overall. So lastly, I'll be talking about, of course, the last bit of merch that I have. And this is from a shop run by two people. And that is, of course, my dear friend from Thailand, Whitmoon Nuanal and Shadow MZ or Rusty MZ. Um, so yes, my dear friends from Thailand, they're very talented. I love their art styles overall and you know, I just had to pick up stuff from their shop. I do have different business cards here. So we got like one with Roll from Mega Man, the other one, you know, drawn by Whitmoon. These two are drawn by Whitmoon. Um, Serra Ledge and Armor Rogue from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And then MZ with her avatar looking so cute in that summer wear. It looks so nice. I love the art style on this one. So yes, I will be showing off now the merch that I picked up from them. So yes, I picked up a whole bunch of like acrylic charms, pins, etc. on here. Uh, so the first thing was actually kind of a freebie she just threw in. I didn't actually order this because uh, I don't really order like notepads. But we have one of... Um, Haldian Wooper and Claude Sire. I almost forgot their names for a minute, but she really loves Claude Sire, so you know she wanted to make this very cute um, notepad with them on it. 
I don't tend to use notepads because I don't want to run out of the paper, but yeah, so these are going to be sealed and kept in like this condition probably forever. So of course, speaking of Scarlet and Violet, we also have Whitmoon's charm designs for the starters. So of course, I picked up all three. We have, of course, Sprigatito, Quaxley, and Foy Coco. For those wondering, Sprigatito was my starter. I'm just, I don't know, I really like the grass type and I like cats, so that's the reason. Um, but yeah, very cute designs overall for these little acrylic charms. And they also do have color-coded little um, straps to them as well. So next one I actually have is a sort of spooky club Pokemon like Gengar, Haunter, and Ghastly little acrylic pin. I thought this was a very nice design and I really love the colors in this overall. Pretty nice and big acrylic pin as well so I was very happy to pick this up. So pretty much also the main reason why I bought from Whitman's store is of course these absolutely massive and gorgeous Serraledge and Armor Rogue standees. Oh my god, I love these so much. They look so good together. Unfortunately, I just don't have the room, so that's why they're still in their packaging. But yeah, the colors on these are so vibrant. I really love what Moon's coloring and just how like vibrant her colors look in her art pieces. And these guys definitely look fantastic. Again, these guys give off massive Mega Man vibes and I'm here for it. So yes, I had to pick these up because they're definitely two of my favorite Pokemon from Scarlet and Violet and yeah. Again, very gorgeous art style overall. Again, I love like both of their artworks. So yeah. So yes, I highly recommend checking out Whitmoon and MZ's shop. I believe they go by Rusty Moon, a very nice name for their shop overall. They're both very sweet people, very talented artists and yeah, so I highly recommend picking up from their shops if you do like any of the fandoms that they do merch for. So now we have like only one small merch pickup I picked up from this person and that is the artist Poxy. Poxy. I apologize for butchering the name but yeah I really do like their overall art style and I did actually pick up like some OC merch so on this business card this is their original character. And yeah, very nice business card overall. I do like the sort of texture that they went for with this. So yes, right here we have this large art print of their original character, Avery. I believe it's Avery. I could be mistaken, but yeah. I really love just the way they drew the food in this artwork. It's very appetizing and I haven't eaten lunch, so it's making me quite hungry. And yeah, I, I love also, I feel like the brush that they use is not your traditional, um, you know, fine liner brush that does actually have some texture to it which I do like so yes very nice gorgeous and also appetizing looking print to add to my collection so yeah um a little bit of a wardrobe change I had to stop recording part of my merch haul so now I'm kind of back with a different outfit on so yeah um now I'll actually be going into some other merch that I picked up from an independent artist and yeah so this came during the time I, you know, stopped recording my merch video, so I thought I'd show these off as well. So, starting off, of course, with the business card. This is um, merch that I picked up from the artist Pemprika, who is an artist I keep coming back to because I really love her art style and her work. And yeah, I picked up a lot of enamel pins. I picked up a set from her as well as some stickers, so I'll show them off now. So right here, I have a whole bunch of clear stickers that I picked up from her. Of course, her Land of the Lustrous merch, I tend to pick up a majority of the time. And also some of her, like, originals, so I have this one right here. So, starting off with this little guy right here. This is the original, the original uh, Little Forest clear sticker set. So, with stickers, I just tend to keep them on the sheet as sort of just, you know, a little collector's item. Um, I don't tend to stick these onto anything, but yeah, very cute overall simple designs for these ones. And I figured I'd talk about these two at the same time. These are of course some Land of the Lustrous merch. Specifically, this is the, you know, Hoseki no Kuni M. Fermeral, I believe it's called. M. Fermeral, if I'm not pronouncing it right, but basically a whole bunch of stickers of Foss in their, you know, various forms throughout the series. So yeah. Again, the way they draw Foss is absolutely gorgeous and I really like this overall sticker set. 
And I picked up this little extra one of, again, Hoseki no Kuni. Uh, this is a po course of post-winter FOSS. Um, so yeah, a lot of FOSS stickers for this one. Next up is her original enamel pin. This is the Harvest enamel pin. That's the name of it. And yeah, very cute. I like the rose gold and, you know, the sort of simple, like, you know, design for this one with the bunnies. It's very cute overall. Another one to add to my enamel pin collection. So, next up, um, I'm holding up her next set of Land of the Lustrous or Hoseki no Kuni pins. These are the Epicity, I believe it's called, line of pins, but yeah. Picked up her second set. These were not cheap, by the way. Um, so, roughly, individually, these are about 25 USD, I believe. They are definitely more detailed, so that's why they're more expensive. And you can get these as a set, and anytime she releases a new set of these guys, she does do, you know, discounts for the set. So I picked her next six up in the line, and... Definitely a lot of money for these, but you know, I want to collect these because I do love Line of the Lustrous. So I'm going to do my best to go through these one by one. And you know, hopefully, my B roll is in order so you guys know at least the characters. Um, you know, kind of maybe uh, some spoilers for again the series just because of some of the characters, like certain outfits they wear, but yeah. So, first, we're going to be talking about. Karen Gorm, of course, like Moon Karen Gorm when they're taken to the moon, and they have this whole character arc. I won't spoil it, but yeah, them in this sort of stylish outfit in silver, very nice overall. So, next, of course, we have Alexandrite in their moon outfit, and I do like the rose gold on this overall, and of course, they included the different colored hair for Alexandrite. If you have seen the series, then you know what I mean, but yeah. Really love this one overall. So next up, we actually have Euclid. So yeah, Euclid has like multicolored hair, and you know I love the sort of elegant pose that they have in this one. So yeah, this one is in silver, I believe. Um, kind of hard to tell with my lighting right here from where I'm sitting, but yeah, very nice pin as well. So next up, we have Rutile. And their appearance is definitely different from how they look at the beginning of the series, and they do have some items that show up later in the manga series, but yeah, like this one as well. And last up, I have the two Admirabilis enamel pins that she made, and these ones have to be my favorite for like the level of detail in them, and yeah, they're both gorgeous. I forgot the names of both of them just because the Admirabilis, they don't really appear too much in the series. Um, but yeah, the one, the pink one, I'll probably, as I do the B-roll, I'll put the names up on screen. But yeah, I really love the rose gold on the pink one, and the black one also looks very nice. So yeah, I really love these two Admirabilis enamel pins. Um, again, I just really love collecting from her shop. She does open... You know, every couple of months or so, her next one, I mean, as of the time I'm recording this, she announced that her next shop opening is in June, which I'm quite excited for. Thankfully, she doesn't have any new of the Epicity enamel pins, or else I don't know what I'd do. But yeah, so definitely recommend checking her out. She also does some artwork for other fandoms, like Chainsaw Man. I saw she also did some Witch Hat Atelier merch. Uh, Skip and Loafer, I think she did a couple of things for. Um, but yeah, I think I did a whole video about her, also her Land of the Lustrous, um, Cinefoss Zine, which is a very, very old video, but yeah, I recommend checking that out just to kind of get a feel for her stuff, and yeah, very talented artist overall, and I can't wait to see what merch she comes out with next.